Hello YouTube. Out here trying out a new tool. And what we have today is a radiator pressure test kit. So this one's not sponsored. Purchased this one myself because I got to do a pressure test on the radiator for our new RV. Make sure everything's good to go on it. And uh, yeah, we're going to try this thing out. So this is a 28 piece master set for checking radiators, cooling systems, things of that sort. Some potential uses you can use for this. Uh, it has this little guy right here that helps you bleed the coolant. Make sure you get all the air out of the system and properly put coolant into the system. There's no air. This is especially helpful in vehicles that um, really have a hard time bleeding, like my Subarus, um, where you have to lift it up and put it on a uh, spill proof funnel in order to properly bleed the radiator. And then I actually have a video that shows how to use one of those for in the future. I'll be testing this on one of the cars. So this is the radiator uh, cap on my motor home here. And this is a Motorcraft cap here. This kit can also test, do the pressure test on the cap as well. So using the gauge, you'll be able to uh, put 16 pounds of pressure and see if it does any blow by or any failure before you get to 16 pounds of pressure. Now the 16 pounds of pressure is what will open the diaphragm to let the um, coolant go through the overflow that goes into your coolant reservoir. To test this, we're gonna take it off and we're gonna put on the appropriate adapter. All right, so annoyingly so, as soon as I remove the radiator cap, as soon as I loosen the radiator cap, and actually the pressure released inside here and got coolant all over the front of the, uh, this is the reservoir for the power steering. It got it over over the house batteries, all over the wiring. So I'm gonna have to clean this up. But um, here's the radiator cap here, which we'll test. Um, probably will replace this because this looks like it's probably uh, getting up there in age. Um, you can see some cracking on the outer ridge of the uh, seal there. Definitely not a good seal on that. Um, not too bad where it actually physically seals here. Um, but if you look at the design here of the filler cap, the filler neck, the bottom of this actually sits here and the top of it sits on the outer ring. And when the pressure builds up, it overflows into here, which is where this top seal becomes critical to prevent it from leaking out. So I think that's actually where I'm getting my pressure leak from. Um, I found a little bit of coolant on the ground. Um, once I park this after taking it on a uh, about a 100 mile road trip. So... I think that's where it's leaking from. I don't think it's leaking from inside here. I don't think it's leaking inside the cooling system, but I checked the caps, looked at all the Ford designations, and another annoying fact is that the instructions are wrong. Surprise, surprise. Um, the So I just matched it up based on the radiator cap and chose the one that looked just like the radiator cap that I'm using. So we're going to twist this guy on get it sealed All right. and make sure we get this on right All right. there we go all right, now we're going to connect our hose and we're going to do the pressure test. You can see there's a little bit of coolant that's bubbling up and down. That means there's a good seal there. There's no drippage from the bottom here. So we're going to pressure test this. All right, we're going to use the gauge here. And this part just has a connector on the bottom of it. Plugs in like an airline. And then you're going to use this part and 
put pressure into the system. So this system can handle uh, about 15 PSI, um, roughly, before it does the bypass. So we're going to pump it up and get up to 15 PSI and see if it stays in that range. All right, I went to the pressure designated on the factory cap, and it's right around 15 and a half PSI on the gauge there. So we're going to hold this pressure and we're going to see if we find any leaks in the system and um, make sure that it holds that pressure. All right, crawling around underneath here. See, I am seeing water pooling here, but it's not actively dripping. Like it's just kind of sitting there. So it, that tells me that there is some kind of leak in this area but it's not a big leak it's a very small leak i'm thinking that up in here it's leaking by the radiator let's see if i can zoom in on that so i'm gonna try to see if i can see where this is coming from here because this will drip it has been dripping on the ground here. And there's some drips down there from where it was up here. You can see it's wet right there on the ground. Um, so I'm going to investigate this a little further. When I look at... the pressure... we are... yeah, there's definitely a small leak here. I'm down to uh, 14 pounds of pressure after pumping it up to 16 pounds. So there's definitely a leak somewhere in the system here. Um, it's not on the cap side um, because we're showing it on the ground. Now that could be because I got coolant over here. And there could be a slight variance on the cap pressure here. But I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put in some tracer dye. In the radiator here. Alright, so this is tracer dye here, or tracer line. Um, this is dye light. It's for all water-based fluids. So you can use this in coolant. Um, you can actually use it in a sprayer um, to find leaks. So window leaks and stuff like that. If you have a mysterious leak and you think it's coming from like a window seal or something like that, there's a sprayer attachment you can get for like your garden hose or pressure washer and uh, spray your car with it. It'll dye. It, uh, it's washable and um, I use it for everything. This is, I also use this for detection of leaks for um, the Subaru cooling systems, for head gasket detection leaks because if I open up a cylinder or probe into a cylinder and there's um, dye inside the cylinder, I know that there's leaking past the head gasket. So we're going to go put this in the RV radiator. All right, so we're back out here with the RV again. Um, now, just as an added precaution, I went ahead and cleaned off everything with just some clean water. Um, sprayed down under the hood here with um, fresh water. This way there's no coolant. We look underneath. It's dripping down, but hopefully after we put the coolant dye in there, um, we hopefully hope to not to see any green dye dripping on the outside here. It should all just be clean after we do the pressure. So I'm going to go ahead put the uh, die inside there and uh, put the cap back on the pressure cap, put the pressure tester on. I'm going to start the engine. I'm going to run it for probably two or three minutes um, just to get everything circulated in the entire cooling system. And then we're going hunting for any die leaks. All right, so I broke the seal on here. And uh, take care not to get it on your skin because it'll dye your skin too. But the cool thing about it is, um, inside the bottle, this stuff is orange. But then when you start, when it mixes with the coolant, it turns it this crazy fluorescent green. So I'm just going to pour it in here. I'm going to take care, try not to spill this um, as I'm doing it. Um, and just kind of letting it 
permeate down into the radiator as I'm doing it. Now, if I do spill, I'm going to take the hose after I seal everything back up, and I'm going to douse everything. That's the cool stuff about it, um, is that it washes off pretty easily, so if you get dye anywhere, it washes off pretty good um, with just some water. So we're going to put this in here, and I'm going to get everything set up, and then we're going to run the engine. All right, so I'm testing here the radiator cap on this and it comes with this black adapter here that um, you connect your radiator cap to you connect the tester the pressure tester to it and then you can pressurize this part and test the cap pressure so we're going to look at this here this is 16 pounds of pressure so we're going to see how much pressure that we can put in that before it backs off. And it will not take any more than 12 to 13 pounds before it bleeds off. So that cap is no good. We're not holding radiator pressure. So that will cause leakage. That will cause pressure blow off to the overflow tank or to the coolant recovery tank um, too much premature pressure bleed off and uh, the system no longer can hold pressure on there all right so after a little bit of a snafu with the uh, getting all over my hand the die getting all over my hand it is now connected Washed off all the residue that fell anywhere. It's drying pretty quickly. So it's holding right around 15 pounds of pressure right now. I pumped about 15 pounds in there. It's been holding steady. So I'm thinking that my issue originally was due to the radiator cap. I was having some issues with this sealing properly um, inside when I put the cap on. So I um, took this off, resealed it, and uh, now it's working. This that you see on here is just the residue from it leaking before. But it is holding pressure at uh, 15 PSI right now. And uh, I'm going to let it run for probably another 5-10 minutes to make sure the pressure holds. And then I'm going to shut it off I'm going to go down and check for leaks. Uh, that look just like uh, this yellow here, this uh, orange green dye. Um, but for now, I got Luka Luka hands. Fun tip, you want to be in a room for Halloween, order a case of this stuff and put it all over you. It's great. All right, so she's been running for probably about uh, 10 minutes now and she's up into the normal range. Uh, the engine's not gonna get any warmer than this just sitting there, especially with the um, access panel open on the front of the RV. And it's a little bit windy now outside, so um, it's probably not gonna get any warmer than that on the gauge. So a um, couple more minutes and then we'll go out and check for leaks after it's been sitting for a little bit. All right, I apologize for the wind. So I uh, cycled through the coolant again. That down there is just from when I had the leak in the cap. It's holding about 19 pounds after I shut it off. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for probably about an hour. Uh, I put a piece of wood under here that will help me see if there's any drips. These drips here are coming from when I washed off um, the access, under the access panel here. But up there on the radiator, again, nothing that shows me that it's leaking up there because that's all clear. And if it was leaking, we'd have green, bright, bright 
super bright green. So, gonna let this go for about an hour. And uh, we'll see where it sits after uh, we get back. Naturally, it will depressurize a little bit, but the fact of the matter is we shouldn't see any leakage. And again, if we do, it's gonna look like this. So, um, here we go. The only other thing that I would say that this uh, set is good, it's good, but this is the only cap that fits this Ford radiator. Um, the cap number on there didn't match and say Ford on the on their guide, so I don't know if either their guide is incorrect or um, this is actually for, not for Ford, but uh, it does bleed a little pressure if I do move this connection. Um, so I have it in a good place that it's not gonna move at all. And uh, hopefully, bleed any more out of it because that's what happens as it starts to drip from here and then it'll bleed past the inner ring and there's no outer ring here this just sits on the um, that just sits on the filler neck there so um, after this we'll test the radiator cap I'm still gonna get a new radiator cap for this that radiator cap is shot um, it's not holding pressure right there where I thought it was um, the only other thing that I did find was over here on the coolant bottle. Um, as you can see, the coolant bottle also has a crack in it right there where the overflow line goes into the uh, bottle here. So I'll be getting a new bottle for that. Check to make sure there's no leaks on the cooling system. If the cooling system's good, I'm just going to replace the cap and we should be A-OK, -okay, good to go. So, make sure to stay tuned. Um, bring in more videos like this with some tool updates and some um, just off, off Subaru um, fixes that I'll be doing along the lines. So, make sure you like, subscribe to the video. Good video on... Uh, this was a good video on how to uh, pressure test your cooling system. So coolant system's holding, we're good to go, and we'll see you next time.